Welcome back to Plug and Play V. I'm Steve. In this one, we'll be looking at the second generation EVco EVI power home charger. This video will take a look at some of the differences in the two, but we'll also go through the various forms of installation. Should be useful for anyone who's kind of considering different places for their potential charger at home, especially if it's your first EV charger, as it is for the uh, folks that we have as our guests in this episode. Just uh, needed to be tightened a little more, huh? Hey, I'm Steve. Welcome back to Plug and Play EV. Uh, I'm here with Larry, who is uh, a resident in, uh, here in Pennsylvania. Well, we uh, purchased this 2025 Equinox uh, the end of March. We needed to have uh, some way to charge uh, because we live in rural Pennsylvania. And the closing charges, charging station uh, was about eight to 10 miles away from here. However, that was a uh, Tesla charger, which uh, hasn't been adapted yet for uh, Chevrolet's. Mm -hmm. So uh, we felt we needed to install our own charger. So we uh, got this uh, charger and uh, had it installed uh, for that purpose. So it was about the installation process a little bit, how you kind of went through it. I had a uh, certified uh, electrician do this. Uh, my uh, uh, electrical box uh, was uh, very, it was, it was sufficient to carry this because I had plenty of room in it. So we ran a heavy duty uh, line from that box over to the inside of the garage here, which this is, this is a double uh, block. There's uh, like uh, two two sets of blocks here that, that they had to go through to uh, bring a line out here. So it uh, entailed uh, to have the electrician come and he had, had to drill this box uh, uh, for this for the electrical uh, outlet on the outside. We decided to do an electrical outlet versus having it wired direct. Now, if we had wired it direct, that would have given us, according to the instruction, 48 amps. But by doing this, we have 40 amps. Uh, the extra length on this particular one was very helpful because uh, by doing an outside hookup, you want to make sure that you're not going to have a lot of moisture. So by bringing, keeping this up, bringing this down, the water on this, uh, when it rains or anything, won't uh, enter here, nor will enter here. Uh, what we did uh, for the installation on this, we had uh, we had a template which was given in the package. We took the bracket and we uh, decided where we wanted to put that, and then we just leveled that both this way and this way, and then held that, and then drew around the the uh, places for the screws. We did that also for the uh, plate here. And one of the things, uh, they gave us all the, the hardware uh, and the mounting screws, which would actually go into concrete. However, for us in drilling uh, these holes, it was very hard to drill. And these ones were probably a little bit larger than we needed. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're really quality. For doing our installation was, was too heavy duty mm -hmm. uh, uh, to do that. So we just uh, used a smaller sc uh, screw, similar, similar to this, yep. uh, but uh, the ones uh, that were, uh, were given to put into drywall or to put into uh, any other kind of facing board was was plenty there. And then, of course, it has a security. They give you a security. Uh, uh, it's like an Allen wrench, but it's it's made to secure these that someone can't just come and put an Allen wrench in and take it out. Right. Uh, we probably use this uh, vehicle uh, on a daily basis for short, short trips around here. You know, I'm talking about uh, 10 miles uh, one way, 10 miles back, 20. Uh, and then we bring it back, charge it, every, usually uh, usually every day. If we use the vehicle daily, we charge it daily. Mm -hmm. 
we charge up to 80 percent so mm -hmm. if we get down to 50 percent right. uh that'll take about uh, four and a half hours but that we just plug it in when we come home and mm -hmm. forget about it perfect so when we've uh, got it all mounted up and installed uh, then we obviously need to plug in the vehicle how did you decide on the height of the unit and where you were going to put the holster there to the right well the general instructions for the installation uh, said that you should locate it somewhere between three and five feet. Uh, my wife, uh, who, uh, who's probably going to be doing the most uh, operations of this uh, vehicle, uh, she's five feet tall. So uh, we, we located this so this would be convenient for her to uh, pull the charger out and take it to the vehicle. So we located this a little bit higher so that we would have room to, uh, uh, to store the cable. The cable uh, actually uh, has a 25 foot uh, cable, which is uh, longer than most cables. So this, this can easily uh, bring the cable over uh, to this side of the vehicle. So she can either pull it in, back it in, but it still have plenty of room and without even straining I have you know I have extra so if you had a rear you could even mm -hmm. pull it over to the rear yeah so this one uh, uh, would be uh, as you can see that and, and this uh, and then we just uh, plug that in secure it and we're ready to go So that was the concrete and brick install. Obviously needed some fairly heavy duty drill to get through the double wall there, but most people should be able to get away with the standard drill. And as you heard, the heavy duty anchors will keep that sturdy. So as far as uh, installing on drywall, you've got the anchors that come with it. Uh, slightly different screws in this one to the Gem 1. I'll put up the different uh, screenshots here and you can see the various types of install you've got. So fairly similar to anything, you'll need anchors in the wall uh, to keep that or to install it on a stud. And then you just uh, get it up in the same way with the mounting bracket and then uh, mount the unit as we saw in the concrete. When you move to wood, it's actually uh, the same. You get the wood screws that come with it again, very solid, sturdy items. Same thing, you're using the template there to uh, align it up, get the holes drilled in the right place on your wooden surface and uh, mount it accordingly. So very similar, you just won't need the anchors for the wood install, but interesting to see the uh, different steps there. Generation 2 just has a slightly different uh, installation on the drywall, but basically only four or five steps to really get this thing up and running, and then you have the security locks in place to keep it where it is. Choose to have the holster or not, you can also use the main unit itself on the charger as the uh, coil and just have it hanging down with the protective cap over. So various ways to install there, all very easy and uh, should get you set up for a solid home charger at whatever rate you choose to dial in. It's still new and it's obviously getting the kit, having it to, to uh, roll one, one particular way, but you just roll it back up Plug it in. Whoops! Uh, plug that in, uh, and now you can, you know, you can also take the cable uh, and whoops. Yeah. You can have some of it on the holster, some of it on the unit, and and uh, just put that over there, which works also. But it's got the uh, retractable yeah, kind me, of clear yeah, which as is well. nice. That's nice too. Yeah, I don't see that as often. You know, it's not going to break this. Mm -hmm. And then this uh, build quality, I, I have the first Evico generation and it's the same kind of build quality of handle. That's uh, going to be a solid, if you drop it, it's not going to break. Some of the plastic ones kind of can have problems with that, but that's a and decent. And this, this, uh, this particular uh, cover, uh, you know, if you look at the cover, the cover, uh, most of them uh, that I've seen, this one has all the, the necessary holes in right. there. So it's going to protect uh, the Which matches pins. up. For over here however on a permanent one like this you really don't need it unless you're just going to let it dangle down yeah, so you got now the option you can you can that's an option you can do 
by putting it over here. So Larry, thanks for taking me through the install. Appreciate the uh, the look at the EVCO EVI Power Generation 2. Um, hope it char keeps you charged up for many years to come. Well, uh, Steve, uh, so far so good. Uh, we're happy with uh, with the EVO and and uh, hoping that uh, you know they they can make a lot more of these. It's very it was it was easily installation. Everything was explained well. Good quality on things, and uh, uh, I'm uh, we're really uh, happy with it. So this is the first generation EVCO which I've used at uh, home and other family members place and this is the very similar looking on the surface but uh, upgraded generation 2. So one thing we can see right from the off you've got uh, the packaging on a different side some of the labeling there on the gen 1. On here you've got uh, a reset button just up here that's an emergency reset, so that's a new addition for the Generation 2, so that you have some more manual control over the uh, stopping of the charging process if you need to. It's also got uh, mainboard shielding for MCU safety and uh, enhanced reliability. Uh, improved Wi-Fi antenna for stronger connectivity. You have a slightly more ergonomic enclosure, so let's see if we can see that. There, this is a fairly simple straightforward little lip on the edge of the Gen 1. The other one has a couple of lips, gives you a little more room for the cable to sit behind there if you do cable management on the unit itself. So as you can see there you've still got the security feature and the bolts on the Gen 1 but uh, you're missing the extra switch in there to emergency reset. So the Gen 2 has that nice extra feature of the reset button which is worth having all by itself. Then you can see the one of the big things that I picked out on the uh, first generation was the length of the cable. First it's a big chunky inlet cable from the uh, NEMA 1450 but it also gives you a little more wiggle room here. It's longer than the uh, a lot of the competitors so you get a bit more to play with in terms of height and positioning. So they've gone with height of this for the, uh, the users they have. It's a little bit taller for me so I may have it a little bit higher but you'd have enough room with that extension cable if you wanted to remount it to go up another little bit to uh, mount that higher, have it at eye level, have the holster a little bit higher up if you decided to change but obviously for them that's working nicely and both of these units will bring that uh, extra input length to give you a little more flexibility. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the various installation methods of the EVCO EVI Power Home Generation 2 charger. Uh, what do you think? Have you used the first EVCO uh, charger? Did you enjoy that? We can look at some of the uh, benefits on the Wi-Fi connectivity and the software in future episodes as we check in with the owners down there in Pennsylvania. Are you considering an install and uh, what kind of surface are you thinking of? Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.